latest on the deadly shooting at an LGBTQ club in Colorado. Police are investigating it as a hate crime. We are live right there on the scene. And we have a wonderful story about two young brothers with a rare disease that were saved by a bone marrow donor. Now they meet the man who changed their lives. Plus, it is a star-studded morning. Brooke Shields, Gabrielle Union, and Jake Gyllenhaal all here. You don't want to miss it on GMA. Ahead the next hour of GMSA, the Spurs complete their West Coast road trip winless. Now they're hoping to bounce back here at home. We'll have a preview of their next game. And just ahead, we'll tell everything we know so far about an overnight shooting on the east side of town and why San Antonio police are still left with a lot of questions. The commute this morning is going to be a problem. You already see right now some flashing lights. Looks like a stalled via bus out there at I-10 and New Braunfels. The rain is falling in some spots around the town, and uh, we'll have an update from Mike and Stephen coming up. This morning, a lot of questions after a man was found walking around with a gunshot wound over on the city's east side. We'll tell you what police know so far coming up. So, thank you, underlined with 13 exclamation points. I don't know what to say. I love you. Did you catch the American Music Awards last night? We'll show you who went home with the awards. Pollard has the catch, and no one will touch him again. Touchdown, Dallas. A big road win for the Dallas Cowboys against a very good Minnesota Vikings team. We'll have some highlights. And it is wet and bone chilling to start this Thanksgiving week, but what's in store for Thanksgiving? We're going to take a look ahead in just a couple of moments. Mike just said it's wet and cold out there, and that's exactly what it looks like out there with live cam at 41 degrees. We are seeing some water on the road. Stephen will update us on traffic in just a bit. Live from Case at 12, Good Morning San Antonio starts right now. And a good morning to you. Hope you're able to keep warm this weekend. It was a wet, chilly one out there for most of the weekend. It is Monday. November 21st. Happy Monday morning. Happy to be in for staff here on the desk with you guys. Um, so I went out to light the way on Saturday uh -huh. and it was super, super cold. But Mike, it cleared up. The showers stopped for just a couple of hours perfect. and it was perfect. And now I feel like, OK, the holidays are here. Yeah, I mean, what better than the cold weather to get you in the in the Christmas spirit like that? So it has just been bone chilling over the weekend. It's the same way this morning, kind of like a repeat of almost Saturday morning with more of the rain around there. We're going to keep a lot of this rain around through the first portion of the day. Obviously, the roads are wet. Most most schools are, uh, most all schools are out, so we're not going to have to deal with that traffic. But if you are heading off to work again, just take it easy. And there is plenty of rain around the area right now. Most of it in the eastern half of our viewing area. We've had some decent downpours coming on through here. This moderate and a couple of heavier little spots. Now things have sort of tapered off a bit here in town. There's another batch and that one line of uh, some pretty good showers that's just about to work its way into Divine. That's going to come up uh, 35 into town. But as of right now, it is basically just the light stuff in and around town, but it has been raining all night long at one point or another. So all the roads are wet out there. You allow yourself plenty of extra time. Yeah, bone chilling, low 40, 40 pretty much on average, low 40s. And then at times a slight bit of a wind chill to deal with. So it's just that cold, damp air that sneaks down the back of your neck. Mold is on the low side. The updated count is going to come out in about an hour and a half. And throughout the rest of today, temperatures don't move all that much this morning. Maybe fluctuate a degree or two. We'll bottom out at 40. And then we make it up to 45 at noon. Not going to be any big warm up today. 48. That's all we're going to be mustering. Add to that, though, tomorrow. Add to that again on Wednesday as well as Thursday. Still have a couple of scattered showers around here. Any rain on Thursday on Thanksgiving. We'll take a look ahead as well as the big shopping weekend coming up in just a couple of minutes. Traffic Authority, Stephen, any big problems with the wet roads? Just got our first one in, Mike. Uh, 603, we are looking at a crash. Now, I'm going to let the Trans Guide camera tell the story here, but we get that closer look and you see that vehicle off in the with the hazard lights on. Uh, just receiving an update from our friends over at Trans Guide. We do know that that is a vehicle that's actually in the center median there. Traffic right now is moving over in those westbound lanes as it appears on 410. Flashing lights also out on the scene. Lots of wet roads as you can see it also there in the trans guide camera. Vehicles are moving, but you got to watch out there because as Mike mentioned, yeah, we can assume all the roads are wet this morning, especially because of that rain. We see it on the trans guide cameras, but it's issues like this that we need to be careful.
careful about. Again, uh, this is at 410 eastbound at WW White. I'll try to get a closer look from our friends over at Trans Guide to get that on our map. But uh, right now, everywhere else, thankfully, has been pretty quiet throughout the morning. We really haven't a whole lot had a whole lot to talk about, which is good. Uh, but we know that, you know, in terms of the commute for school, that may have not be so much of an issue. Maybe folks still trying to head to work. So just be careful out there. There's no need to rush if you're coming in from Pleasanton to the Alamo City. Still pleasant. 29 minutes on I-37 in the northbound lanes. And right now, Castroville, you can expect the usual drive time. It's about 30, 30 minutes or so, US 90, if you're heading in those eastbound lanes. The arrival from Lytle looking like 17 minutes on 35 northbound. So I wouldn't say it's a time that you have to just chug the coffee and head out the door. Take it slow. That's the best way to go. And we're going to have to watch this area closely. 410 at WW White. Again, this does appear that it's in the eastbound lanes, but we do have a first responder out there in the westbound lanes as well. This could impact both lanes of traffic, but we'll get a closer look at that and get that on our map in the next few minutes. Mark, Sarah. Thank you, Stephen. This morning, police are trying to figure out how a man was shot while he was driving overnight. It happened around 1 in the morning near the intersection of Roland Road and J Street. That's near I-10 on the city's east side. Police say the man was found walking on Roland with a gunshot wound to his back. The man told officers he was in his car when he was shot and had wrecked into a fence. He was taken to the hospital, and so far police haven't found a crime scene. They're just trying to figure out how this all happened and look into those details. Now to a border skirmish overseas. At least 30 people killed in a series of airstrikes in northern Syria Sunday by the Turkish military. The Associated Press reporting Turkey launched the deadly airstrikes over northern regions of Syria and Iraq. They were targeting Kurdish militant groups that are blamed for a bombing in Istanbul. That bombing killed six people and wounded over 80 others last weekend. This morning, at least 46 people are dead in Indonesia after an earthquake shook the country's main island of Java. The AP reports the 5.6 magnitude quake damaged dozens of buildings, including, including an Islamic boarding school, a hospital, and other public facilities. As of this moment, information is still being collected on casualties and damage there in Indonesia. A Uvalde CISD police officer whose wife was killed in the Robb Elementary shooting has resigned. An official with the district confirmed that resignation. Ruben Ruiz's wife was fourth grade teacher Eva Mireles. Ruiz was seen checking his phone in hallway surveillance video, had received a phone call from his wife saying she had been shot. Ruiz was taken from the hallway and was disarmed by other law enforcement officers. Mireles was alive when she was pulled from the classroom but died on the way to the hospital. The date of Ruiz's resignation is not clear at this time. This morning, San Antonio police say an off-duty officer will be questioned following a carjacking with, ended with the officer shooting at the suspect. That suspect was not hurt, but is now in police custody. Officials say it started with the carjacking yesterday afternoon when a woman's Dodge Charger was taken at gunpoint. About two hours later, the stolen Charger was spotted by police, but the suspect got away. Moments after that, the off-duty officer spotted the vehicle and tried to stop it by firing what shot into the vehicle. The suspect was not hit, but... While he tried to get away, he crashed the vehicle. Police were able to arrest the suspect on Old Pearsall Road near Ray Ellison. No injuries reported, but there was damage to the stolen vehicle and a fence during that incident. More trouble for Elon Musk topping morning consumer headlines. Tesla has recalled more than 320,000 vehicles. A software issue may prevent the taillights from, um, from working out. Inflation this year is likely to take a bite out of the pile of presents under the tree. Recent surveys show Americans are planning to cut back on the number of gifts they buy and are expected to contribute less to charities. What's a tradition for many here in the Alamo City and the official start to the holiday season? The University of the Incarnate Word kicked off their 36th annual Light the Way Festival. So check out this video from Saturday night. Hundreds of people filled the University of Incarnate Word's campus to celebrate the season. University staff and volunteers hung one million lights across the campus, bringing happiness for many families. I've been coming to Light the Way every single year since I was three years old and bringing my daughter here and letting her watch all the lights turn on, it's, it's amazing. We're the first place that the lights come on in San Antonio and it's wonderful that we get the opportunity to kick it off here close to the headwaters where the San Antonio River begins. The lights across campus will be 
up from dawn to dusk at UIW through early January. And you said it's a sight to behold. It really is. Uh, I love driving on Broadway, yeah. Hildebrand, and seeing those lights. You're just like, and you know, it's nice. Oh, also, also, I was walking through with my husband at the lights, uh -huh. and I go, this would be a nice place for a proposal to happen. And the words just came out of my mouth. A guy dropped to his knee uh -huh. right in front of us. And, and it, it was happening. I was like, Oh my gosh! Wow. And of course, like I was like, I'm not crying. They're I was crying. crying. You yeah, were crying. my husband yeah. was crying. We were all crying. It was beautiful. It awesome. Was, it was so nice to see that. A very nice weekend for one couple. 609, 41 degrees. All right, still to come on GMSA, the stars gathered in Los Angeles for the 50th annual American Music Awards. We'll have the highlights from the big show. And just ahead, if you're hitting the road for Thanksgiving after the break, we'll show you some ways to make the journey visit family as pleasant as possible. 41 degrees at 609. The issue this morning are going to be the wet roads. Stephen's going to have that covered, and Mike will let us know how long this rain is going to stick around and also have our Thanksgiving forecast. We come back. Thanksgiving now just days away. Are you ready to hit the roads to get to your loved ones? Or maybe you're thinking about taking to the skies. Millions of other Americans, of course, will be joining you. ABC's Alexis Christophersis has some tips on how to make the journey as stress-free as possible. Thanksgiving, when families and loved ones gather from near and far. The roads and airports filled with travelers. AAA predicting 54.6 million people will travel 50 miles or more this Thanksgiving holiday. And that's a one and a half percent higher than 2021. So we're looking at the third busiest travel season for Thanksgiving holidays since 2000. If you're one of the estimated 49 million making the trip by car. The best times to take to the roads is really before 8 a.m. Uh, and after 8 p.m. You're going to see peak travel times between 4 and 8 p.m., Friday, Saturday, and Sunday. And then Wednesday is the absolute peak day for travel, about 42% higher than normal volume. Before you hit the gas, don't forget to pack the essentials. Making sure you have a safety kit in your car and flares and extra water and pack snacks. If you'll be flying to your destination. I think it's going to be a really busy Thanksgiving travel season. I think you're looking right now at flights that are more full today than they were pre-pandemic. So you're seeing flights with uh, a fewer empty seats today than we saw in 2019. Don't expect that coveted empty middle seat next to you. Not terribly likely. Although delays happen, don't be too concerned about cancellations and disruptions. I'm cautiously optimistic that air travel operations have improved and that we're not going to see the same meltdowns that we saw earlier this year. Even at the worst of times, still over 97% of flights are operating. The odds are still very much in your favor. Alexis Christophorus, ABC News, New York. Back here at home at 615, uh, still have problems out on the roadways, and it could be because of those wet roads that we see out there. Let's get a wide look at Trans Guide. This is one of them, 410 at WW White. Uh, now, we notice that first responders are out there on the scene, and of course, uh, the vehicle that is actually experiencing trouble is right there in the median, that crash, uh, just in the center median. And very dark out there, but we can make out that traffic is already moving. Now, the commute to school may not be an issue this week, but it could be those that are maybe heading to work, or hey, maybe they're heading out of town. Be careful because although the crash is actually reported in the northbound lanes of 410 near South WW White, the slowdown is taking place in the southbound lanes, and that is because we do have a first responder that's at least blocking one lane of traffic so they can get this scene cleared out. Let's hope everyone's doing okay out there, but unfortunately, it's not the only issue we're tracking. Uh, taking a big jump over here to 35 southbound at Zazamora, we have another crash also reported. Southbound lanes aren't really shown much of a delay just yet, but it's an area that we're going to have to watch closely. But let's take a look at the metro area and the surrounding areas. Uh, not a whole lot else to talk about, so there is some relief out on the roadways, so we don't really have to worry too much. But of course, the roads are wet. I want everyone to just be careful out there, especially as we're getting closer to morning rush. But let's get back on rotation here and you can still see a lot of those roads are wet so just remember uh, safe travels this morning even though there may not be a big commute uh, but just want everyone to be safe thank you Stephen. you're welcome mike mm -hmm. so you do you have thanksgiving decorations inside because mm -hmm. christmas decorations aren't allowed yet right. in your house so oh. we'll do that after thanksgiving so okay. gotta celebrate thanksgiving 
and when would be a good but, time but to yours, put it? But yours oh, are, mine are done. Mine are done, too. You've skipped over Thanksgiving. Oh. No, 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 no. We just started the happiest season early, right, Sarah? Right. I feel like you can do Thanksgiving with a Christmas tree twinkling in the background. Mm, yes. I'm well. ready to decorate for Christmas. I see where it is in the garage. I've just got to get to that <laughs> box. <laughs> we'll get there. Yes. <laughs> I was telling my boys that, and they're like, no, we're not going to eat Thanksgiving off Christmas plates. So <laughs> anyway. <laughs> Why not? <laughs> Snug is. Well, we knew who won I, that war. I, I, I'm outnumbered. Snug is a bug in a rug. Bonnie won. Mike, nothing. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. That's, yeah, I mean, kind of goes without saying, right. doesn't it? Right. Uh, <laughs> yeah, he was just all wrapped up like that. Warm blanket out of the dryer. In that ice cream, you just pull something right out of the dryer and wrap up in it. Uh, might as well do that this morning as well if you don't have to head off to work because it is cold. It is bone chilling out there. And as Stephen was showing on the roads, plenty of uh, water out there at 410, plenty of wet roads at 410 by the airport. So we've seen. A little bit of a break in the action here in town right now. Still some showers up to the uh, northeast up there around Kirby, Windcrest and down to the uh, south. But this is just a temporary break because we have more showers that are coming on in here. And I'm going to click a little button over here real quickly. Pardon me, but uh, it's going to continue to be rainy throughout the rest of the morning as well as into this afternoon. Although we are going to be seeing uh, more in the way of some or more in the way of clear skies later on this afternoon afternoon. There's all these different little buttons I have to punch here and there we go. That should make it work. So keep an umbrella handy despite the fact that things will continue to uh, to sort of clear out just a little bit. So down here to the uh, southwest, there's some of these showers and that's that one spot that's been moving through Divine and that's going to continue to work its way up 35 in toward town. So that one little heavier spot of rain right there. But otherwise, as we go on into the rest of the morning, notice how the heaviest most broader coverage is moving off to the east and now it's becoming the scattered variety and that will be the case throughout the morning and the afternoon. Temperatures have been holding steady. We may fluctuate a degree or two and here's the computer model which is handling this perfectly. The more widespread moderate showers except for that one spot moving into southwestern Bear County that continues to work its way off to the east and just the scattered variety of rain later on this afternoon. Keep an umbrella handy and you're going to want it tomorrow as well as well as on Wednesday early on in the day on Wednesday and uh, throughout the afternoon. Now we'll a couple of showers Thursday morning early, but those are going to be moving on out of here. So this computer model as well as a few more is keeping us uh, dry later on on the day on Thursday. Humidity is going to continue to go up, but then another front moves on through here. That's going to trim the humidity. It's not going to be a big blast of cold air, though, like the last front that moved on through this Kind of again, trim the humidity, keep us from getting too awfully hot going into the weekend. 45 degrees, scattered showers at noon, and then a high temperature today up to 48 with a couple of showers. One or two of them tomorrow, one or two on Wednesday. We do warm up 55 Tuesday, 65 Wednesday, and then showers early on Thursday will clear on out and looks like a fantastic weekend with temperatures just about normal upper 60s for highs. Sarah, Mark. Thank you, Mike. Now to the star studded night in L.A. Celebs gathered for one of the mu one of music's biggest nights of the year. That's right. The 50th annual American Music Awards were jam packed with powerful performances and even some controversy. ABC's Will Gans has a story. The 50th American Music Awards rolling into the Microsoft Theater in Los Angeles. Pink getting the party started on the ground and Carrie Underwood taking it to new heights. A night full of show-stopping performances and surprises. Some the audience loved. Cardi B joining Glorilla for an unannounced performance of Tomorrow 2. But other surprises were less warmly received. And the American Music Award goes to... Chris Brown. <laughs> Lionel Richie honored with the prestigious Icon Award. The all night long superstar then joining his friends Smokey Robinson, Stevie Wonder, Charlie Puth, Melissa Etheridge and more to sing We Are the World. And Pink taking the stage again to perform a heartfelt tribute to the late Olivia Newton-John. And at the world's largest fan voted award show, the fans hopelessly devoted to T-Swift. An historic weekend at the AMAs for Taylor after a turbulent few days with that Ticketmaster disaster surrounding her tour. I cannot express how 
unbelievable it is to me that I still get to do this and that you still care. So thank you, underlined with 13 exclamation points. I don't know what to say. I love you. Will Gans, ABC News, New York. 622, 41 degrees. Still ahead on GMSA, the slumping spurs of silver and back are headed home winless from their West Coast road trip. We'll have a recap from their matchup with the Lakers. Pro football coverage, powered by Davis Law Firm. A lot of fans a question if the Cowboys could go into Minnesota Sunday and hold their own against a really good Vikings team. Big D got it done. Both sides of the ball. Offense put tons of points on the board. Dallas D kept the Vikings out of the end zone the entire game. Cowboys win in dominating fashion. Final from Minneapolis. Cowboys 40, Vikings 3. Short week for the Cowboys. Cowboys will host their division rival, the New York Giants, on Thanksgiving Day. That game is set for 3.30 in the afternoon. You know when the turkey trip to fans kicking in. While the Cowboys are making a push for the playoffs, the Texans are not having a great season at all. They host the Washington Commanders yesterday at NRG Stadium in Houston. Could only not could only manage to get in the red zone uh, once end zone rather final from Houston commanders win at 23 to 7 Houston will next host Miami next Sunday to take on a very talented Dolphins squad San Antonio Spurs also not having a great season so far now having lost all five of their West Coast road games last night they were taking on the struggling Lakers however L.A. looked pretty good against the Silver and Black. Final score, Lakers win at 123, Spurs 92. Mm. Spurs fall to 6 and 12 in the season. The host of Pelicans coming up Wednesday night at 7 o'clock. Come on, Spurs. Let's get it done. All right, 626, 41 degrees. We have a lot heading your way in our next half hour. As for the update on No Shave November, we'll show you who's leading Team KSAT and what you can do to help. It was so scary. I heard shots, broken glass, bodies. Oh it was, how, why? A community in Colorado Springs still mourning, looking for answers after five people were gunned down this weekend at a nightclub. We'll take a look at the aftermath. And he was a hero to many kids who grew up in the 90s. We'll take a look at the life and legacy of actor martial artist Jason David Frank, who suddenly passed away at the age of 49. Sure does feel like it did over the weekend. There's some rain around there. It is cold, it's bone chilling. What about Thanksgiving Day? Forecast coming up in just a couple of moments. Thank you, Mike. And outside waiting for that sun to come up. Uh, not everybody is off this week. Right now, the roads are wet out there by the airport if you're traveling. Obviously, check ahead for those flights. Good morning. It's Monday, November 21st. Hope you stayed warm this weekend. It's a wet, chilly start to our short work week for most folks. The days up to Thanksgiving. Mike Osterhage joined us now. Then we're going to talk to Stephen, see how the commute is looking out there. Hey, Mike. Hey, good morning. Yeah, the, especially on Saturday. Well, and this morning, you know, when we had more of the rain on Saturday, yeah. it was just like you walk outside. It's, like, it's really not ideal weather to be going to HEB to get all your last minute stuff this week not you know this, it's like cold and drizzly this yeah this afternoon will be better okay. we'll have less as far as rain even later on this morning the rain's going to start to uh, taper off a little bit we still have some of it out there although we're kind of in a lull as of right now but more is going to be uh, kind of moving across the area but you can see the roads are still definitely damp out there so if you are heading out you know most all kids don't have school but still have to head off to work obviously take it easy 42 degrees right now we've been holding steady for the past couple of hours Two point stands at 38, a little bit of a breeze out there. Just enough at times to give us that slight bit of a uh, wind chill. Notice how kind of big picture, most everything is well off to the east and we just have the scattered variety of some of these showers around here and this one spot which uh, a couple of decent downpours, that's some uh, heavier downpours, is sliding on through just entering the uh, southern portion of Bear County and that's going to continue in sort of the north, the eastward fashion. So that'll be moving through just about the southeastern side of uh, Bear County, or excuse me, of San Antonio proper sliding up to the northeast and then it's just going to be kind of the scattered variety of showers later on this morning as well as this afternoon. Still a few of them out there, just not as as much coverage as what we've seen so far. 
low 40s on average. I mean, these temperatures are very consistent, haven't moved at all. Thanks to that cloud cover. Thanks to the higher humidity. Mold is on the low side. The updated count is going to come out in about an hour. And this morning, got some showers around here. We'll still keep a few of them around today. Upper 40s, so jacket weather. Yes, indeed. Same thing tomorrow. A couple of showers, mid 50s. Then we're going to be in the mid 60s in the afternoon on Wednesday. So there's that warming trend continues. For Thanksgiving, a couple of showers in the morning. Then we'll just have mostly cloudy skies. We will make it up to 70. A cool front moves through here. Notice I use the word cool front because it's not like the last front that we had come on through here. Yes, it will knock temperatures down ever so slightly. Basically get rid of some of the humidity will still be in the upper 60s over the weekend and more sunshine for this weekend. All the details coming up in just a couple of minutes. Traffic Authority, wet roads. Mm -hmm. Nope, giant problems though, nope. right? Yeah, no giant problems, Mike. Uh, for the majority, things are pretty quiet, but we do have our fair share of incidents. So let's talk about what's happening here along 35 at Zazamora because you see those flashing lights from Trans Guide. <laughs> Pardon me, I mentioned this crash a little bit earlier, and in fact, we're seeing a different shot of it now. Uh, wet roads, obviously, still going to be a possible problem for a lot of these drivers if they're not taking it safe out there. But uh, we are seeing these incidents which cause even more delays. Thankfully, uh, we're not really seeing a lot of traffic here along 35. This is reported in the southbound lanes, but I did notice that we have a few first responders out there, uh, particularly as you get to the exit ramp. So we have to make sure we watch out for them. But not the only issue I'm tracking this morning. There is another one, but you see it right there. It just popped up on our map. We have two of them. The south, southeast side pretty much is where you can expect to see some issues. But let's take you in first because what we saw in Transguide is a crash near I-35 southbound at Zazamora. No delay just yet, but something to be on the lookout for. Uh, drive over here, though, does show a problem in both the north and southbound lanes of 410 there at South WW White. Uh, we're well, speaking to our friends at Transguide a little bit earlier this morning. Now, the crash was originally reported in the northbound lanes, but more of the delays taking place in the southbound lanes of 410. Uh, that could be because we could be because we have first responders that are maybe possibly blocking off a lane over there, but we'll have to get a closer look. And just regardless, north and southbound lanes expect some delays right now. Getting it back here to this shot at Transguide. We'll keep a close eye on this and hopefully before the show wraps up, we'll have a better update. Mark Sarah. Stephen, thank you. New details this morning surround a racial incident at a high school girls basketball tournament up in Marble Falls. Happened Friday afternoon at Marble Falls High School as an East Central senior stepped to the line to shoot a free throw. Monkey screeches were allegedly heard coming from the Marble Falls student section. This was reportedly not the only time it was heard during that game. The East Central community has since rallied on social media to spread the word about the incident. The East Central Independent School District Athletic Director Suzette Ariola issued a statement on Twitter saying in part, we are sorry our players had to endure this from spectators and we're working quickly with their administration and coaching staff to resolve this situation in quote. Now on Friday evening, a Twitter account for the Marble Falls girls basketball team announced they would not be playing a game Saturday during the tournament. It's unclear if this decision is related to the events that unfolded Friday night. You can read more about this story online right now at KSAT.com. Now to Uvalde, where the season of giving is inspiring some college students to lend a helping hand. The food pantry at the Southwest Texas Junior College helps the students there. It's been active since 2017, but COVID hit the pantry hard. Landon Hines is the president of the college's honor society, Phi Theta Kappa. She took on the challenge to revive the pantry. They might need that little bit of extra support just to make it a little bit easier having to you know, pay for college and help with families. Half to two thirds of our student body is low income, so they're making 150% or less of the poverty line. We have that information on how you can help right now on our website, ksat.com. Well, for the first time in at least two years, the Raul Jimenez Thanksgiving dinner will be held in person down at the Henry B. Gonzalez Convention Center downtown. Volunteers spent part of yesterday getting ready for the big event. The RK Group donated more than 500 turkeys this year. The community style dinner is expecting to feed more than 25,000 people. Prices have gone up with inflation and it's just getting really, really hard to afford things. The Jimenez dinner is free of charge and open to the public. Doors will open at the convention center Thursday morning at 10 a.m. Authorities are investigating the deadly mass shooting in Colorado Springs as a hate crime. Police say five people were killed and 25 others were injured after a 22 year old gunman opened fire with an AR-15 style rifle at Club Q 
and it's an LGBTQ nightclub. The bartender, Michael Anderson, described the scene. Something in my head said, get down, you know, just get down right now. So I did, and then, then glass started just shattering all around me, B bottles breaking just uh, above, I'm on the ground and above me, there's just glass flying everywhere. Heroic patrons prevented dozens of people from being shot after one person grabbed the suspect's gun and hit him with it. This latest shooting comes six years after 49 people were killed at the Pulse LGBTQ nightclub in Florida. In a shocking late night business move, the Walt Disney Company announced former CEO Bob Iger will return to head the company for two years. Disney said in a statement that Bob Chapek stepped down. Disney board said it believes Iger is uniquely situated to guide the company during a time of transformation. Iger led Disney famously for 15 years as it absorbed Pixar, Lucasfilm, Marvel, and Fox's entertainment businesses, then launched its Disney Plus streaming service. Actor Jason Frank, the original star of the Mighty Morphin Power Rangers series, has died at the age of 49. Frank debuted as the Green Power Ranger, a bad guy, before morphing into the good White Power Ranger in later episodes. The mixed martial artist performed many of his own stunts in the hit TV series, which ran from 1993 to 1996. According to the Dallas Morning News, Frank lived in Humble near Houston and owned a martial arts studio there. Frank's representative has asked for privacy for the actor's family and friends. He is survived by his four children. Back here at home, don't forget our KSAT community. Share the Shoes campaign continues. Can donate a new pair of shoes or socks to a child in need. Just take your donation to any of the San Antonio Police Department substations throughout town, and that runs through December 16th. Hey everybody, it's RJ and I'm taking part in No Shave November for the third straight year along with my KSAT co-workers as we try to raise money and funds for cancer awareness and treatment. I'm personally doing this for the Wisdom family. Uh, Bryce Wisdom's story, of course, galvanized the entire city of San Antonio a few years back and he um, unfortunately lost his courageous battle with kidney cancer. And I'm also doing this for my personal family. Uh, my uncle Hedda passed away from cancer a few years ago and that is still something that affects my family very deeply to this day. So please go ahead and donate either to my page or to any one of my coworkers' pages. Uh, any little bit of donation is very much appreciated as we continue to try and fight this horrible disease. Have a good one, everybody. Well, that was our RJ Marquez, uh, my traffic bro, by the way. So really proud of him. He's raised a ton of money. And so have other guys. A uh, quick look at our current leaderboard right there. And it's pretty much stayed the same since we last talked about this. But I did check our No Shave page before we ran RJ's uh, testimony. We're at $11,441, I believe. So someone donated. I'm just trying to figure out who they donated to. I don't think it was any of us, but that's okay. We have 15 guys that are participating. 10 of those that you're not seeing on the screen there. You can donate to any one of those guys, my KSAT bros, by scanning that QR code. It will take you directly to our KSAT No Shave page, and there you'll find out more about why a lot of us are participating. But again, all of this goes back towards helping these nonprofit organizations, 13, toward cancer research, treatment, and prevention. We're making a difference dollar by dollar, whisker by whisker, so uh, any amount helps. And with about 10 days to go, and we're only halfway past our goal, yes. there's still plenty of time for us to reach our goal. Every dollar counts. Oh my goodness. And what's my... that? What? T tank. How did that get there? Yeah. How did that get there? <laughs> yeah. Yeah, that's uh -huh. a shameless plug, but uh, it works. And wow. He's still in the wow. Lead. And yes. I am so shocked that the top three are all standing in this desk next <laughs> oh, to me. Oh, yeah, yeah, me too. <laughs> yes. me too. You know what? Thank you to our GMSA viewers. Yeah, you exactly. Know, we that's all the yeah. Time. yeah. It's got nothing to do with us. It's it's y'all yeah. yeah. out there. So yeah. thank you very much for yeah, that. Thank so, you. Yeah. Appreciate it. Yeah, let's find a shredder for that. It's very subtle, Mike. <laughs> yes. Classy. We've worked hard for this gray hair, folks. <laughs> oh, I've worked hard for these whiskers, Team Whiskers. Okay. Was oh, that the end? Okay. okay, okay. I think we're done. He's just going to leave it up there. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Yeah, so we call it a pregnant pause. 641. After the break, Saving History will take you inside an East Side Museum carrying on the legacy part of San Antonio. Okay, a local man is making sure part of San Antonio's history is never forgotten. 
He is doing more than just writing it down. Charles Williams has a museum full of memorabilia to tell the story of African Americans in this city. Our Katrina Weber recently got a chance to take that journey through time. The beginning of the tour will start right here. From the front door to the back walls, there's a story here that Charles Williams wants to show and tell. Dr. Heed, who was a significant city council person, our first black fireman, I was Mr. Sullivan. Can't say enough about the Iceman, George Gervin. He is a walking who's who of San Antonio, and now he finally has a chance to share it all. Just a lot of history you'll find here that I don't think you'll find anywhere else. The emphasis at the new Williams Historical Museum is on African-American history, local people who've made a difference. And these people laid the groundwork for us to be here today doing what we're doing and enjoying some of the benefits. Through words, photos, and his personal property, he paints a picture of the past. Uh, when we go into this little room, we call stepping back into time. Some displays are more personal than others. This is the scale that we weighed the cotton on right here. Williams left behind picking cotton in Granger, Texas for cutting hair in San Antonio in 1957. Impressed by local black business leaders at the time, he became an entrepreneur. Three years ago, he bought a crumbling historic church in the 500 block of Montana to fulfill a decades-long dream. I felt uh, a profound need to do this, not just for me, but for the community. A community that includes civic and civil rights leaders, artists, and athletes. Alongside all of these accomplishments are reminders of the painful past, all of this part of the African-American experience in San Antonio. Williams hopes all of it will impact the future. We're very proud of it, and I think it's going to be here for a long time. Katrina Weber, KSAT 12 News. Thank you, Katrina. All right, let's get a look at those roadways. 647, uh, it's getting busier out there. US 90 in Medeo, you can see the commute's picking up. Roads are still wet out there, but let's give you a wide look now because Transguide is showing some problems in certain areas of town. 37 at South East Military isn't one of them, but I mentioned earlier that we still have a crash reported right there along 410 at WW White, uh, but not the only incident, unfortunately. It seems that more problems are popping up on the roadway. Uh, here's what you can expect right now. 35 southbound at Zazamoto, we do have first responders still out there flashing lights. Got to be careful because it's not the only incident. We just saw this on Transguide 410 northbound at WW White Road, but more of the impact is taking place in the southbound lanes, which is evident right behind me. Now, uh, that could be because first responders are out there in the southbound lanes, but the crash originally reported in those northbound lanes. So just watch out in both lanes of travel. Uh, also, new incident to report as we take you up here over to uh, closer to the northwest side, uh, I-10 eastbound at UTSA Boulevard. A third crash now being reported. Haven't spotted this one yet on the trans guide cameras, but it's something to keep a close eye on. Wide look at the map, though, doesn't really show a whole lot of slowdowns, but we are seeing a little bit of it picking up there along US 90 as you approach 1604 from Castroville, as well as 410 uh, near I-10, closer to the east side. So those areas are always expected to see a little bit of uh, slowdown as folks are making their way into the Alamo City or maybe just heading to their destination. Drive safe out there, Mike Osterhage. The roads still look pretty wet behind me. Yeah, and we do have uh, more rain moving on through. Then it's going to be sort of uh, the scattered variety throughout the afternoon hours. This is what a lot of folks were doing. Yeah, we were as well sitting in front of the fireplace over the weekend. It was a good weekend for it. Great picture there. Make sure you send in those KSAC Connect pictures. All right, we've got wet roads over there at the airport. It looks a little bit better, at least in this vantage point. But then you look down to the south and well, we've got more. The heaviest rain, first of all, is over here to the east, the more kind of uh, better coverage, if you will. Then it's becoming more of the uh, the scattered variety. And this one spot that's working its way in through the uh, the southern portion of uh, Bear County, and this is working its way up to the east at roughly 27 to 30 miles per hour. So at that rate, it's going to be uh, working its way through the southeastern portion of the county, and it's going to be hitting uh, Bronick Lake right around 655, Lavernia about uh, 730 or so. So that will continue its northeastward progress. It is starting to kind of ease a bit, but there's still some decent downpours thrown on in there. So just be on the lookout for that. Otherwise, it is just the light stuff that's making the roads kind of uh, well, just 
a, a nuisance out there. And like I said, it's going to be the scattered variety then later on this morning as well as this afternoon. Still keep an umbrella handy. Obviously, you want a jacket handy because these temperatures really aren't going anywhere. We're going to be up to 45 at noon. Top off at 48 today, which is no heat wave by any stretch and still a few of those showers, but they will begin to taper off. So this is what this computer model is showing perfectly. The more widespread coverage working its way off to the east and then just the uh, scattered storms or scattered showers, pardon me, uh, later on this afternoon and at times just a no rain out there, kind of like what we had Saturday afternoon, more rain early on and then lesser amounts later on. All right, Wednesday. There may still be a scattered, scattered sprinkle around here or two. Uh, you can see by the evening hours, just one or two of them. Then rain early on Thursday morning. That's going to move on out of here. If you do have to uh, head out to uh, relative's house, neighbor's house early in the morning or pick up something that you forgot at the grocery store early, a uh, couple of showers, and then we're going to be clearing on out. There's two schools of thoughts or actually one that doesn't agree with the rest of them as far as computer models. So the computer model that I'm going with and the other ones have this low working its way on in here and it's going to be moving on out fairly quickly. So a quick little shot of some rain that I just showed you and then it gets on out of here. There's one computer model that's kind of the, the lone wolf on this one that has this thing just sitting on top of us through Thursday afternoon into Friday and Saturday, keeping rain around here. But again, the consensus is the other direction with this clearing on out. So today, 45 degrees, scattered showers here and there. It's going to be just kind of scatter shot, if you will. 48 for a high temperature today, which is only about at the normal high or excuse me, normal low temperature, I should say. And then tomorrow we do warm up to the mid 50s, mid 60s on Wednesday, Thursday, Thanksgiving. We're going to be up to 70, a couple of showers early, and then we'll start to uh, clear on out slightly and then sunshine upper 60s as we go into the weekend. Thank you, Mike. 652, 40 degrees. When it comes to courts, there are many reasons why a person is indicted. Coming up tomorrow on GMSA, we speak to an expert about first degree felony charges. 40 degrees, 652. You can see the sun starting to come up. We'll have our final traffic and weather. When we come back. 655, uh, we are approaching 7 a.m. Few issues to be on the lookout for. Let's give you a quick look around town. We see that 2 a.m. Winding, winding way, a little bit of a distorted shot, but everywhere else, like 35 at 410, not a problem. Watch out here, though, 35 southbound at Zazamoto Street, as well as here, 410 northbound at WW White. We have a few crashes to report on. We'll give you those updates throughout Good Morning America. And just a few uh, leftover showers hanging around here. It's going to be wet. It is cold out there. And then it's just going to be the scattered variety and a high today of 48. Be safe out there, folks. <laughs> we'll see you back here at GMSN.